Hello, comrades! Welcome back to Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic. My name, of course, is Zobit Potato, and I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who has commented, thank you to everyone who has liked the videos, thank you to everyone who has just watched the videos. Frankly, the fact that you chaps are uh, enjoying yourselves means the world to me, and uh, I'm truly grateful to everyone for uh, for, for turning up and, uh, and watching the videos. It really is fantastic, and uh, I'm very, 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 very grateful indeed. If you're after some more of this action, then um, check out Twitch. I've been streaming an entirely different playthrough on an equally fantastic map and uh, and having a, a whale of a time. Check out that if indeed you're interested. Anyway, uh, the last episode went reasonably smoothly. <coughs> Ignore the... <coughs> <coughs> Ignore that, uh, but yeah, things are going things are going reasonably well. We are making progress on a lot of stuff that matters. First things first, let's check up on the rail construction office. As you can see, we're about fifty percent of the way through all of our structures at the moment, which is not something that I'm too displeased with. Uh, that'll just sort of rumble on in the background. No changes there. Uh, we are also making some significant progress to the Kolgradsky coal ore processing area, which I'm actually expecting maybe to be finished by the end of this episode. So there's actually not that much work left to be done. Uh, it's just quite a, quite a few work days, but um, but that's entirely doable. Uh, the other thing that I want to tangentially do in Kolgradsky over the course of this episode today is to try and uh, to try and place down a university. We need to ensure that we are teaching people uh, up to the standard of highly educated individuals uh, so that we are able to maintain a teaching workforce at the Kolgradsky school here. Uh, we don't want people to become uneducated. We don't want them slipping into uh, into uneducation. That's, that's absolutely not what we're after. So we want to get that set up uh, as well today. Okay, uh, continuing on, Grainsky. Grainsky is looking good. Um, if you will recall, we created uh, this Grainsky Farm V2. We created that farm in order to supply the chemical plants over at Chemgrad, which we'll get to in just a second. However, I can now say with uh, with pretty much complete confidence that the situation over in Chemgrad is uh, is very, very good. We'll, we'll get to that in just a sec, as I've already mentioned. So, what I think I actually want to do is I want to change the way that the resources are kept here. So I want to basically move all of the grain that we're producing from this agro farm over to the grain storage right over here uh, in order to help with food production because at the moment food production is one of the only things that we're not quite there for. And as the population of Potato Grad continues to expand, which again, we're going to get to that in just a second, uh, we're going to need more and more food production. So, uh, so that's really, really important. It seems that we need more workers actually. Um, yeah, it would be really, really good if we could get some more workers at the Grainsky Food Factory, for sure. That would be that would be brilliant, so that we can maybe get through this uh, this backlog of vehicles a little bit quicker. Anyway, uh, what I'm saying, we're going to move the excess food supply over to here. It actually looks like there's not uh, that much food supply and demand. However, when we increase the number of workers coming out to Grainsky, I'm sure we're going to need it. Right, so let's travel down the road to the uh, to the bridge and bridge grad. We can, of course, see that we are now storing our nuclear waste just in the middle of nowhere. By the way, I believe, I believe that nuclear waste in and of itself doesn't generate radiation. The way in which radiation is generated, if we pop back across the nuclear uh, reactor and nuclear grad just for a second, the way that radiation is generated is when a fire occurs in a nuclear reactor. That is when we have uh, we have a little bit of radiation given off. So in order to counter the effects of radiation, preventatively, I'm going to place down a fire station over in Nuclear Grad so that we can uh, so that we can head that off before it happens. I will do that just now whilst I remember, so that we can avoid at all costs a radioactive meltdown. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely not what I want, and that should uh, that should all auto find and all auto build. Yeah, we're gonna continue to evolve our uh, our nuclear production area, our nuclear campus, if you'd like. Um, this is like. This is the absolute minimum level that we need to maintain in order to produce power. Ironically enough, we're not producing power at the moment. However, we're about to get some more nuclear fuel arriving at the reactor, so we will be able to get a little bit more fuel in just a second and restart production, restart uh, exporting of, uh, of power to the border. Anyway, the point that I'm going to make is that this is like the basic version. What I envision is this entire area eventually being filled with 
as much nuclear production stuff as we can possibly fit in here. I mean, this is just the basic reactor. can only produce only, in inverted commas, uh, 4,680 megawatt hours of power. However, I'm fully anticipating, I'm fully anticipating getting a double nuclear reactor and many, many, many more nuclear fuel fabrication facilities uh, over the course of this series. Right. Brilliant. So, uh, then we go over to Shipsky, and this will feature in my plans uh, quite a lot over the course of uh, over the course of this episode. Um, the reason that it's going to feature in my plans quite a lot over the course of this episode is because one of the focuses that I want to have over the course of this episode is to try and get as many dollars as possible. That's right. Whether it's selling nuclear fuel to Western, uh, to Western, to Western capitalists, that's fine. Uh, but I want to try and sell a bunch of stuff to the West uh, because I need dollars for. Uh, uh, for the expansion of Potato Grad. Why do I need to why do I need to expand uh, Potato Grad with dollars? Great question. Uh, we are going to try our very best to import as many we can't actually hover over it because I don't have enough dollars to pay for it. We're gonna try and import or invite as many immigrants as we possibly can from third world countries. And the way in which you do that is with the humble dollar. Uh, so that's what we're gonna try and do. We're gonna try and raise a little bit of capital over the course of this episode in order to pay for that. It's super cheap. It's super cheap to import them in comparison to uh, to importing um, people from the Soviet bloc. However, the disadvantage is, is that uh, everyone pretty much has very little or no education. So you need to invest a significant amount of time in order to uh, in order to educate the uh, the immigrants, which is fine. We don't mind that. Um, you know, our, our education system is actually pretty spotless in uh, in Potato Red. Anyway, so that's something that we want to do. We're gonna try and uh, and export some uh, some dollars. So I'm going to actually just delete you. Stick in a brand new stop. That's right. Export to Western countries. Brilliant. And we will do that with a whole bunch of resources, actually, which I would like to talk about in just a second. Right, so, uh, the other thing that I wanted to briefly touch on is uh, the state of Mini Constructo. I'm personally very happy with how many constructo is looking um it's it's fine we haven't really touched it in uh, in a good wee while not since the the start of the brand new series i can confirm that today we will return to mini constructo mostly to expand our uh, our oil network um there is going to be there is going to be a bit of work done to the size of our oil refining as you can see there is an island all the way up here which is very, very, very oil rich. This is the one here, very, very oil rich. And so what I want to do, what I want to try and do is I want to try and, uh, is I want to try and build out there. I don't know whether it'll just be pipelines or a road. In fact, it'll have to be a road if we want to build stuff from mini constructo, but yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna build out there. Right. And heading down the length of the pipeline to the city of Kobe. I've talked a little bit about Kobe in the last episode, we now have a university here, which is looking absolutely exceptional. Uh, Kobe, the situation in Kobe anyway, is uh, it's pretty dire actually. We have no gravel roads, which is just tragic. Uh, and also we have nowhere near large enough of a population uh, for my liking, because if we travel down the rails, as you can see in Refinovsky, we have only got 83 workers in the oil refinery at present. Not to mention the fact that the huge chemical plants can deal with up to 500 employees each. So the uh, the population in Kobe is going to need to explode in order for us to uh, in order for us to in order for us to really fill up the oil refineries and fill up uh, fill up the chemical plants as well. And that is something that I do want to do because behind all of this all of this uh, all of this ambition for the course of this episode which I'm sure is uh, is overly ambitious for sure um, is is a, is an overwhelming desire to actually make money. Now I've already talked about how we're going to be making a bunch of money from um, from selling nuclear fuel at the border and you know don't worry that's going to continue. However, we need to make sure that our glorious nation has uh, has income from other sources because as you can see we've got quite a few uh, quite a few outstanding loans, quite a few outstanding loans. Although in fairness, uh, the first one is a about to be repaid fairly soon and then two more are going to be repaid uh, shortly after that so that is uh, that is really good okay well since we're in Kobe we might as well we might as well address the issue over here since we will need to just sort of queue up some buildings uh, now 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 church get demolished brilliant 
I have fallen absolutely in love with these residential buildings, the uh, the 21 story prefabricated flats. They are absolutely fantastic. I mean, I feel like they are maybe a little bit broken, but um, but I love them. I think they're great and I would like to try and ideally build as many as we possibly can in uh, in this little space that I've just cleared. This little grotto if you'd like. Man, I dislike that word actually with uh, with intensity. What are you guys doing here? You can be moved, ideally? No? Do we have any space just anywhere else? No. Okay, well that's fine. We will demolish these four houses in time, and in the meantime, we will just work on three flats. Yeah, we'll work on three flats there, and then we will double these flats up on either side over here. Uh, and we will also build, or at least try to build, a brand new store in this vicinity. A small shopping center, I think, will absolutely suffice. Yep, we'll try and build it right about... Yeah, right about there, actually. That looks quite trendy, quite nice. Uh, so that should just deal with itself. There we go. That should just deal with itself. We should see some auto-assigning offices connect up. If it doesn't want to work, then I can always auto-assign. I can assign them all manually. That's totally fine. Okay, so we should have one construction office, this office here, which does the vast majority of the construction. I think it's got all of the construction materials needed in order to in order to build everything. So I'm just going to leave that and let that uh, and let that go. Ooh, something else that I needed to mention about Chemgrad. Uh, I've talked about it before. However, this is I think the time to make it official. We do in fact have a mod installed, which is uh, I believe it's called the Greenhouse mod, right? Which basically allows you to build a massive, massive, massive structure, which grows crops indoors. I will demonstrate just as soon as I've cleaned up this little lake because we do need rather a redonkulous amount of space. And before you go go ahead and ask, redonkulous is a word. Look it up in the uh, in the English dictionary, you dingus. It's not me, it's you. Uh, okay, let's have a little look. Factory, it's in factory for some obscure reason. And then there are two sizes of greenhouse. The regular greenhouse, which is immensely huge. And then the medium-sized greenhouse, which is even larger. Can you believe it? Can you freaking believe it? Goodness gracious me. And it the whole game, the whole game lags when you when you try to place it down. I mean, ideally, ideally, this would be fairly close by to the train station. I feel like a location. I feel like here actually would be would be fine. Or maybe maybe actually even over. Over here, yeah. I mean, we'd need to move. Uh, we need to move a cable, but uh, but again, I don't think that would be the worst thing in the world. And we need to do a little bit of terraforming, so let's go and do this as well. All right, brilliant. Uh, we are going to head across to Potato Grand in just a second and try and rectify all of the issues that I talked about. I say rectify, not really rectify. There are a couple of issues, but um, but things are going things are going pretty darn well for the most part. Ooh, also, uh, in the last episode, we placed down a big old cable here, which I stupidly managed to build with uh, with rubles, but that's fine. We are indeed making big progress on the big cable, which is going to also help uh, our financial position because we're going to be able to export a whole bunch of. Uh, a whole bunch of power, which is really, really nice. Okay, what I'm going to do, just real quick, is ditch that. Yeah, ditch all of that. Then we will head back on over to modded stuff. And truth be told, yeah, pretty much, pretty much right there. If we could get the ground flattened accordingly, then that would be brilliant. Fantastic. Of course, since the update, allowing people to walk a lot further, uh, I'm pretty confident that people are actually going to be able to get from... Excuse me? Yep, there should be a path right here, which I can't, for some obscure reason, see. Alright, the path is... The pathway entrance is just... All right, I can see it. If I, okay, that's a weird one. Right, there's a pathway entrance right there. I'm kind of hopeful that uh, we should, in fact, be able to... Man, I love this. I love this. I love this game. It's so good now that you've got the ability to uh, to do this. Okay, so that is a pathway. And I believe... Well, that's only 207 meters to get to there. And I think it's about 500 meters walking distance. So yeah, we should have no issues getting to the greenhouse. The greenhouse, by the way, is going to take a while to be constructed. You know, don't get me wrong. It's a lot of materials. It's a big commitment. Uh, I'm going to get it assigned to the construction office in Kobe as well. 
And basically what I'm hoping is that this singular greenhouse, maybe another couple of greenhouses at some point later down the line, will basically supply all of the chemicals, or will supply all of the chemical plants, I should say, with all of the crops that they need. Now, the uh, the farm that we built at Grainsky did a great job of supplying a little bit of a backlog. So we've now got, you know, 390 tons of, uh, of grain in the Chemgrad grain storage moved over here from the, the road cargo station. So that is absolutely fine. That'll keep us going for a good long time. But again, we're only using a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of our uh, of our chemical of our chemical production. I should highlight, by the way, why chemicals are so darned important. And I have already highlighted the highlighted why chemicals are so darn important. But it goes without saying that we need the chemicals for nuclear processing. It's one of the key components in nuclear fuel fabrication. And as I've talked about, I want to ramp up absolutely ramp up our, uh, our fuel fabrication process and therefore it's pretty darned essential that we try and get as much uh, as much as much chemical production as we possibly can so it really really is uh, very very important right okay that's all looking good the steel mill is still a little bit short of iron i'm not entirely sure why it's short of iron uh but that should hopefully fix itself. I mean, the rail network is actually okay at the moment. I mean, you may laugh at me, you may mock me, you may say that I'm bad at rails. I will not dispute you on on any of those points. However, for the most part, I actually uh, I actually think it's looking it's looking pretty good at the moment. We do have rather a few coal trains, um, and I think maybe it's time that we investigated getting another iron train. I think that would be a prudent a prudent investment. Um, yeah, sure. Why the heck? Let's, uh, let's do it. Okay, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing that quite says orbital potato like, uh, like just, you know, wildly frivolous spending. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, do I like my wildly frivolous spending. Right, so let's, uh, eliminate the last, uh, the last remnants of this loan, shall we? With a celebratory brand new iron train. Wonderful. Happy days. Oh, by the way, there's nothing... No, there's nothing untoward with our iron, with our iron area. Yeah, but there is a maxed out, a maxed out large aggregate storage. Also, I believe that the large aggregate storage limit has been increased. I think it used to be like half this, so now it's uh, so now it's doubled. I do indeed believe. Don't quote me on that though. Okay, uh, you are here. I mean, sure. That's fine. Can I have a little uh, a little look at this train, please? Oh, you're actually just coming in. Brilliant. Well, that's fantastic. I am going to view line detail, and I'm going to set... All right. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to copy you. All right. I'm not going to do that at all. I'm just going to take this train, and I'm going to create a brand new line. You can go here. Yep. Load fully with iron ore. Wait until loaded. Yep. By the way, I've had a couple of people asking, um, am I going to make trains? Absolutely. Anything and everything that this game has to offer will be explored over the course of this series. So have no fear, friends. Orbital Potato is here with, uh, with bridging loans and all of the shenanigans that you've come to expect. Everything is going to feature in this series. Absolutely everything that is possible will happen. That's a very, very large promise. I, uh, I don't want to disappoint you, but uh, it probably will. It probably will, uh, without a doubt, actually. Uh, okay, so speaking of doing everything that I promised, we still haven't, we still, 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 still haven't been able to open up the uh, electrical components uh, facility. Now, the reason why we've not done that quite yet is because the trolley bus stop isn't at the moment... Uh, configured to uh, to deliver to deliver workers to the electronic component uh, building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on add on the extra the extra facility there, and that should mean that should mean that we will now be able to see people working. There's already a connection there. Uh, we should now be able to see people work at the electrical components factory, which is brilliant. Now, the thing that I have to bear in mind is that the electrical components factory needs a bunch of resources in order to, in order to function. Now, the resources that it needs, plastic, chemicals. There's the chemicals again. We need chemicals for a lot of advanced stuff, and therefore it's really important that, you know, we have a fundamentally strong chemical production chain. Uh, I am going to create a brand new connection here. Load you up. Yep. Unload you. And we're going to unload chemicals. 
and plastics. I'm also going to add this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to buy another couple of trucks at the medium distribution office. I'm going to buy some open hull trucks. I'm gonna buy the best that we've got. In fact, maybe I don't even need to necessarily buy a truck. Hey, 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 we can just, we can move a truck over. We can move two trucks over from the, from the, uh, the vehicle production facility. That is brilliant. I'm very chuffed with that. Okay, so we should have now two brand new trucks that are moved across to the distribution office. These are homemade trucks, actually, at that, which is, which is very, very nice. Man, I'm very, very chuffed about that. That's real nice. That's real good. Real happy with that. Okay, so that'll allow the distribution office to now pick up coal which is pretty darn brilliant. And we should be able to load up coal at the small storage, and we should be able to unload, uh, not coal, what am I talking about? Steel. Uh, unload steel. Load up and unload steel from the uh, from the open storage over here, which, uh, which should work out just fine. Right. So those trucks will need to arrive, and you are going to, yeah, the medium distribution center. You're going to the medium distribution center as well. That is brilliant. I think we can we can just about wait for that to occur. Why are you driving so darn slowly, my dude? Why are you driving so darn slowly? I don't know. I, I don't I don't know myself. I don't know. Anyway, we've got workers at the electrical components factory. That's brilliant. Uh, we're just going to deliver the plastics, the steels using the brand new distribution warehouse which is quite nice even though this is a distribution uh, a distribution uh, office for the nuclear area at the moment we can utilize it to also supply the electrical component factory as well the sooner we get electrical components up and running the better as far as i'm concerned there's no disadvantage to you know just immediately trying to trying to start producing electrical components electrical components as you know super super late game tech the more the merrier really as far as I'm concerned, the sooner the better. Anyway, uh, the way that electrical components are going to be manufactured, we are going to supply the steel, we are going to supply the chemicals to this here road cargo station. Actually, that's something that I need to bear in mind. I will need to deploy the steel directly into the... directly into the factory. There we go. We're going to need to go here, and it'll be unload... Yeah, unload the steel directly into the Potato Grad electrical components factory. Uh, and that will allow us to start producing all of the stuff that we need to produce, which is brilliant. Brilliant plastics, chemicals, and now we just need steel. And we just need we just need the trucks to arrive from the from the workshop. I'm sure they'll be coming. I'm sure they'll be coming any second now. Uh, but yeah, so that should sort absolutely everything out. All of the electrical components will be delivered back into this warehouse. I'm going to limit the amount of stuff that is able to be stored here. We don't need alcohol. We don't need food. We don't need clothes. We don't need mechanical components. Uh, electronics, we don't... Probably don't need, but again, that might become... That might become something that we produce around the area of this uh, potato grab warehouse three, but we'll just have to we'll just have to wait until it becomes relevant. Also, I should mention that between episodes, I actually that's not good. Uh, I actually uh, set up a little train diesel station right in the middle of this track here to make sure that at all times the uh, the locomotive can. Uh, can get filled up with uh, with petrol on his way back to the uh, on his way back to the station, which is very very nice indeed. I also thought I'd done a really smart thing by setting up a little uh, a little delivery network uh, of fuel from the Bridgegrad oil slash fuel storage area. Turns out though, uh, I utilized old trucks which already were filled with bitumen, which is pretty embarrassing because that means that they're not able to do close to the job that I want them to do, which means that I'm going to go and buy two brand new oil tankers. I'm going to copy the orders for both of those guys. Yep. And then I'm going to send these guys both back home. Brilliant. Okay, so we should now be able to deliver our very own fuel to this diesel station, which is kind of what I am after. Hey, 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 look at that. We have our open hull trucks arriving just now, which is great. Also, it looks like a prefabricated crane is being delivered to something on the nuclear campus. I suspect that it's probably the pylons, because uh, 
it turns out the prefabricated uh, cranes are really, really good at uh, at making pylons. So there we go. Okay, now that our open hull trucks have arrived, there we go. We can now say unload steel at the electrical component factory and load steel up at the uh, at the steel open storage place. And just like that, the distribution office has saved me a tremendous amount of faff. Everything is looking fantastically brilliant. And I'm very, very happy. We've got the workers. We don't have many of the workers, hence why I want to expand the population of Potato Grad, or at least try to expand the population of Potato Grad. It's very, very important to me. Um, but yeah, that's good. That's really, really good. That's really, really, really flipping good. How's the nuclear plant looking? It ain't looking too shabby if I do say so myself. We're still outputting a bunch of power. That's, uh, that's not too bad. How many... How many tons of nuclear fuel do we have waiting? Not much, to be honest. Not much at all. Not as much as I would like. Only 0 0.54 tons of nuclear fuel, which is a bit concerning, actually. There's a heck of a lot of nuclear fuel waiting at this fuel fabrication plant. And there's even a little bit over here. I think part of the problem might be... Part of the problem might, might be is that we currently have one vehicle which is driving you know, all the way over to the, whatever, the nuclear dump, basically. The nuclear dump to dump these used nuclear waste containers, which, you know, is fine, uh, but also I feel pretty unsustainable, maybe. Maybe it's time that we actually get ourselves a brand new truck. Not necessarily a brand new truck, but a truck that we've made at home. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, and let's move you to that construction office, even though I never want you to ever go there. And then I'm going to say, go here, go there, wait until unloaded. Wrong way around, wait until unloaded, wait until loaded. Yep, pretty much, pretty much just fine. Uh, cancel, go to depot, and just send you to the nuclear fuel fabrication plant. Okay, so with that, we should be able to guarantee our supply of nuclear bits and bobs. Also, I'm going to take this figure down a little bit and take it down to... I'm going to take it down to 69%. The reason that I want to take the wait until loaded figure down to 69% is that the truck has a weird propensity... a weird propensity to not uh, go to the next stop unless absolutely all of the storage is filled, even though we can only transport up to... 0.6 tons of nuclear fuel, it will just refuse to go to the next stop unless uh, we take that percentage down a little bit. So uh, so with that, we should be totally fine. How are we doing in terms of the fire station? I mean, not as well as I would like to see us doing, to be honest. I I've, have a funny feeling that a nuclear fire is, is just around the corner for us. I don't know why I feel that way, but I just do feel that way. I'm a pretty apprehensive uh, type of guy. Pretty... Pretty pretty unlucky as well actually which is um which is not good not good at all and i just have a funny feeling that the game is conspiring against me i don't i don't know i i'm just i'm just feeling it though i'm just feeling it i uh, i don't know i don't know what's up right 1500 and something work days so that is fine and then we can export our power that's nice keeping keeping costs to an absolute minimum here which is exactly the way that i like to do it are we making any electronic components no, however, we do have our first delivery of... No, we don't have our first delivery of steel. Our first delivery of steel will be on one of these trucks, one of these KMZ 510 or 510s uh, coming into the electronic components factory in just a second. No, it's not you either. Is it you? Huge construction office. No. Hey, it's you. It's you. You've got the you've got the goods that we need. Okay. That is fine. And still it's iron that we're missing. Still iron. I mean, I really didn't I really didn't figure that iron was an issue that we were having at all, really. Um I yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it, I I just for for most of the game, we haven't been having an issue with iron. We've been We've been fine for iron, really. It's 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 usually coal that we have the the problem with, but um, I guess that's fine. 
I guess that's I guess that's completely fine. If uh, if it's iron that we're having the issue with, then it's iron that we're having the issue with. That's okay. Uh, train stations looking pretty good. Yep, nice. Okay, great. And we are also continuing to build some more prefabricated flats in Potato Grad. I mean, we're gonna need to build way more. Let's be let's be brutally honest. I think that we still have a massive problem. Yeah, we massive we have a massive problem with adult children, 21 plus, still living with parents, and we are about to cruise past 10,000 population as well. So, yeah, anyone basically that is living with their parents can't actually work until they have a place of their own to stay, which is why it's imperative that we always keep increasing the uh, the amount of housing that we have available. You know, none of this, none of this green belt nonsense, none of this San Francisco, you know, expensive living situation. No, we are always building, always be building. That's the that's the motto that I have uh, that I have thus adopted, and an important one at that. Am I right, Millennials? Uh, right, so, electrical components, we're working on the electrical components, that's looking pretty darn good. As you can see, only one worker at the moment, however, we're producing them, and they hopefully should be stored at the Potato Grab Warehouse number 3, which means that we can draw from, uh, we can draw from this, we can draw from this warehouse, if indeed we want to supply, uh, electronic components to anything, really. Uh, also, I have electrical components stored in this warehouse over here. Do I want to maintain that? I don't know. Also, I've got no chemicals. I've got absolutely no chemicals, which is a problem, and it prompts me to go back to here. I mean, we need chemicals for nuclear stuff. We need chemicals for nuclear stuff. It literally is that simple. Did you did you bring any workers? What the heck? Why have we not got any workers? We've got eight workers waiting here? Unable to visit a pub slash tavern. Not able to enjoy culture. Not able to participate in any sport. Is it a power issue? I is it a power issue that's causing all of our problems? No, it's just that we've got three flats, and each of these three flats is consuming a vast, vast, vast number of people in order to build. Okay, well, thank goodness, at least I've, I've cracked the issue. Let's reduce it down to, like, uh, I don't know, 19. 19 people in each building. There we go. That's looking good. Any other buildings that have got employees that they shouldn't have employees? The greenhouse? No, it doesn't. I mean, look, it's imperative. It's absolutely imperative that we maintain production of, uh, of oil. Like, that really is important. Uh, the technical university probably doesn't need this many employees either. I'm going to take that down a little bit. It will need an increase of employees at some point. However, it doesn't need... It doesn't need that many employees at this moment in time. Uh, we will also need to get a more consistent uh, power supply as well, but that will that will come with time. Kindergarten spaces, kindergarten spaces, I feel are probably fairly contested at this moment in time. So we should also probably zone ourselves. We should also probably zone ourselves a modded school and a modded kindergarten, as it's pretty important that we are able to let our workers work rather than uh, remaining at home looking after looking after children. Okay, right in there, brilliant, and right in there. I am conscious that this is maybe a little bit too far, so I'm gonna build, I'm gonna build another school and another kindergarten out here. Now, this might be classified as overkill in some places. This might be classified as overkill. I will have none of that, none of that whatsoever, I tell you. There's no such thing as overkill, as Liam Neeson said in the 2009 film of the A-Team. He said, overkill is underrated. And you know what? Those are words that I've carried with me uh, through the years, through thick and thin, um, as they say. Uh, why? Great question. I don't know. I, uh, I don't have the answers to these questions. However, what I can say is that... It goes to uh, it goes to show the strength of those words if I've managed to remember the context in which they were said and also uh, the film in which they're said and who said them, you know. So what can I say? Liam Neeson. He said them. I'm repeating them right now. He probably didn't write them, but uh, I'm repeating them all the same. Right, brilliant. Kindergarten's down. I've waffled a substantial amount, which is which is actually fine. I feel like it's better than normal. Alright, this is just irritating. 
Uh, we're gonna need to make sure this is all linked up here. Also, I am disgraced, absolutely disgraced at the amount of dirt road that I'm building. It's it's actually a bit of a, I mean it's it's a bit of a national embarrassment how how poor the living conditions in Kobe actually are. It, it is it is a sham. It is an absolute sham. A total sham. Either way, that should allow us to build all the schools, all that, 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 and that. Okay, I mean, look, two schools, two kindergartens. I think that you can start to see exactly how big I'm envisioning the city of Kobe becoming. Um, maybe not necessarily as populated as Potatograd, but definitely a bigger city in terms of footprint, just because of the way that it's laid out. Um, I, I, I think that that's probably likely that it uh, that it just gets bigger. Also, no, 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 no. I'm not having everyone go to work at the uh, at the school. Also, I haven't taken down the number of people that I want to work at the shopping center, or should I say build the shopping center. I don't care how long it takes to build this stuff. I just cannot have more than like 20 people committed to building any structure once. It's just, it's just not in my nature. I'm sorry. Right, take that down as well, kindergarten right the way down to 19. Also, the fact that there are so many dirt roads in uh, in the city of Kobe is really, really bad. In fact, it's really, really bad for a number of reasons. Uh, but most importantly, because people spend such a long time walking on terrible dirt roads, that means they spend less time working, which is, which is a bit of a problem, actually, uh, because I like making people work. That's right. It's true. You heard it here first. Okay, get this all tweaked downwards. Brilliant. Okay, so we're pretty much we're pretty much ready. Kobe is pretty much a self-sustaining city. We might need to get you know the occasional sports field, you know an extra, an extra shop, an extra few bits and bobs. Uh, but you know for the most part, actually, I uh, I think I can I can be fairly happy about the way that this city looks. Also, the roads. Just ignore the roads. Just pretend that the roads don't exist. I mean, you might as well you might as well just you know live up a country trail. Uh, for all I care about the, the condition of the roads in this city, it, it, it frankly doesn't matter. Look at that, 175 people waiting at the uh, waiting at the station. We do need to actually get a, another train. Uh, I'm not happy with just having one singular train, and we're definitely going to need to increase the uh, the consistency with which those trains arrive at the at the station. But that's that's completely fine, at least for now. That'll keep us going. Uh, chemical production is woefully disappointing actually woefully 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 disappointing and if it continues to be disappointing then that means that it is going to have a knock-on effect over here uh because we're not going to be able to produce as many nuclear fuel rods as i want to and that is that's a shame right electronic components electronic components are being produced unbelievably slowly i simply don't believe how slowly they're being produced at this moment in time is that because a lot of people are investing their time, efforts, and energy in building houses and structures across Potato Grad? It may very well be. In fact, it almost certainly is. So let's change that. There are still so many people. There are so many people. There are so many flipping people at this train station. It's actually unbelievable. It's actually, it's actually impossible. It's a it's a, a logical contradiction. However, nuclear stuff is still being built, uh, still being produced. Nuclear power is still coming along nicely. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Uh, look at all of these containers, by the way, of of UF of UF six. Holy cow, that is a lot of containers that needs to be turned into into nuclear fuel. You are not able to get across here. Okay, I'm gonna untick wait until loaded so that you don't end up just waiting forever yeah and where are you you are here as well okay I'm also going to untick wait until unloaded there I mean look it's pretty imperative that this truck gets to the border as consistently as we possibly can uh, because that's you know that's 200,000 rubles each and every time you decide to drop off you decide to drop off a thing over there also you know what I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna do something which I uh, which I haven't really done that much of. In fact, I might not even have done any of it. I'm going to create a brand new little road. Obviously, that's not what I'm talking about when I say I've not done a lot of it. I've done a lot of road creation in my time. That's right. 
what I basically want to do is set up a route for... I want to set up a route for this flipping nuclear truck. So I'm going to create some waypoints. That's right, some waypoints. I don't usually create waypoints. No siree. Okay, so after going to the nuclear grad fuel fabrication, you're going to go to this waypoint over there. Brilliant. Then you're going to go to this waypoint over here, and then you go to that waypoint over there. Brilliant. So go to this waypoint here, and I'm sure everyone in the in the city of Potatograd will be grateful for the fact that we are no longer driving nuclear fuel rods right through the center of the town. That would indeed be uh, somewhat of, uh, I would say, progress. Yes, very much progress. Speaking of progress, there is being significant progress made on the... Uh, on the big power cable, the 18 megawatt power cable. So that is really, really good. I think we actually are delivering too many people. We're delivering too many people to the uh, to the, uh, the the nuclear the nuclear campus, really. So that needs to probably be rectified. But I guess I can live with that for now. I mean, look, too many people. Totally fine. It's a it's a. It's a price that I'm willing to pay, at least in the short term. Uh, yeah, but get this, get this, uh, get this work done here, and I will be a very, very happy individual. That's cool too. Still iron that we're missing out. I, I simply don't believe it. I have no idea why we don't have enough iron. I mean, it seems like we don't have enough of every single resource, all the time. Maybe that's just my luck, or maybe it's not. Who knows? More and more nuclear fuel accumulating. Very, very good indeed. Uh, also, Shipsky and Dockski, um, yeah, so, about that, about that, I, I was kind of thinking over the course of this episode, I was either going to try and export some chemicals, or try and export some steel to the West. I think, to be honest, the chances of that happening are maybe minimal. Um, the reason that I think they might be minimal is just because I don't feel confident enough to turn on uh, steel exporting again. As you know, we've got this train right over here that is pretty much ready to go. Um, but we just need to turn on one of the forklift factories in order to make that work. I don't feel like we're really to that point yet. How, how about plastics? I mean, we could export some plastics. Plastics go for a pretty large amount of money, and we've got about... What, cumulatively, uh, just less than 100 tons. Just less than 100 tons of plastic. So, we could do plastic. We could try and export plastic. Cement, waste of time. I mean, fabric, maybe, but that's quite far away from the docks. And we've got to bear in mind that anything that we want to export to the uh, to the west needs to be transported over to the docks over, over here. Food, meats. I mean, maybe meat, to be honest. Even, I mean, we don't even have that much meat. We sure as heck don't have much food. Uh, yeah, we are... We are very, very low on food. Very, very low on food just in general. Because we've got such a large population in, uh, in Potato Grads, the amount of food that we have really leaves a lot to be desired. But, again, can't really complain about that too much. Should we try for plastic? I mean, maybe plastic's not a bad idea. Maybe plastic's not a bad idea at all. Can I equip the... Ooh. I can equip this to the distribution office. And I want to unload plastics only. Unload plastics only at the distribution office. 50%. Let's take this down to 49%. There we go. So as soon as you're 49% loaded with plastics, you'll be ready to go. I mean, that is quite a, that is quite a journey, I must say. And therefore, maybe it's worth me getting another couple of trucks. Which I can't do because I do not have the rubles for it at the moment. Uh, that's fine. Where's my where's my nuclear where's my nuclear truck? It's good. He's about to he's about to reach the border very, very shortly indeed. Wait, hold on a minute. Did you? Oh yeah, you did. This is this is a different road. I thought. I thought you should have been taking this road. In fact, that's not actually a bad road to take in order to get to... In order to get to the border, but, ah, whatever. Also, have I completely drained everyone from Petersburg old houses? I think I have. 
Go me. That's nice. Also, are we done? Are we done with this nuclear this nuclear uh, reactor supply cable? I think we are. I think we totally are, which means that we're about to we're about to skyrocket the amount of power we are exporting, which is in itself brilliant. Okay. This this truck, this truck is worth 250,000 rubles. Can there be a more expensive truck in the game? Almost certainly not. I legitimately do not think so. I think uh, I think this is pretty much about the most expensive combination that you can get. The most expensive load that any truck can carry. All right, and you're going to get in here, and you are just going to give me 250,000 rubles straight up. And I freaking love it. I freaking love it. Oh my goodness, that's so good. Okay, so what I want to do twofold. First of all, buy trucks. Sure, I'll buy that many trucks so that we can start distributing some of this plastic over to the border. That's going to be that's going to be quite good. Uh, yep, happy with that. We are working on our electrical components. Brilliant. In fact, we're making we're making a good amount of electrical components. Yeah, what can I say? Very happy with that. Okay, so that is one thing that I wanted to do. The other thing that I wanted to do was head on over to the very corner over here. I then want to immediately disconnect these wires here. So this is going to stop us exporting coal produced power. And instead, we're going to connect up 18 megawatts high voltage power. I'm going to auto build that. And I'm going to rush build it so that we hopefully are able to just export directly from the single reactor to both export points on the map. So you should see in just a second our production spike. Maybe not double, but pretty much double in fact. There we go. Pretty much just doubled. That is brilliant. And that should definitely put us in uh, put us in for a profit. Yeah, that is that is really, really good. It'll also probably drastically reduce the amount of power that we are consuming from our coal power plants, which is good because that means we are saving yet more coal. Not like that's transpired to be too much of a problem, as we found out over the course of this episode. Uh, but that is that is fine. Uh, the nuclear the nuclear uh, fuel fabrication facilities going to be put under a little bit more pressure, a little bit more pressure to produce uh, a little bit more nuclear fuel for the reactor as we now consume nuclear fuel slightly faster. The good thing is, however, the good thing is. Since we don't power, we don't power anything in, in fact, yeah, we are, yeah, so this nuclear reactor at the moment, 100% of the power produced is used for export. I think that's kind of good. Um, we probably want to get a, another nuclear reactor. In fact, I know we want to get another nuclear reactor. We are gonna get a, a double nuclear reactor at some point. In fact, let me just, uh. Flat, I can't flatten this land because it's just outside my range. That's really irritating. Well, I can uh, I can show you the size of this thing. So this is a double nuclear reactor, a twin nuclear reactor, as it's uh, as it's called, uh, and it is indeed a monster, and it produces pretty much pretty much double the power that a single nuclear reactor produces. And this will be something that we will bring to nuclear grad uh, in time, without a shadow of a doubt. It's something that we want to get, and I highly suspect that this twin nuclear power plant will be the thing that produces it'll be the thing that produces the power for us locally and at that point we will be able to retire the uh, the old tired coal power plants but for now the coal power plants you know maintain an important role of producing power for entirety uh, you know only local consumption uh, really anyway I i'm going to just go to the border and i'm just going to check that we are producing yep and producing and exporting 18 megawatts over there producing and exporting 18 megawatts over here. Look at that. That is a, a very consistent uh, export of power. I don't think that there is any other... I don't think there is any other power output on the map, as far as I'm aware. I'm just going to quickly check along the western border. Doesn't look like it. I don't think there is. I'm pretty sure that in this map there are only two power imports slash power exports. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, that's all we've got. There's nothing else. Nothing else along the top here. Yep, this is the the export station that we uh, the export the export customs house that we go to normally. Yeah, you know what? What can I say? I'm I'm remarkably happy with that, and uh, and that's gonna that's gonna net us a fairly considerable amount of power. It really it really is. I mean, the price of power can and will fluctuate. If we have a little look at the price of power over the course of the year. I think power is one of the things that doesn't actually fluctuate too much. 
last month. Yeah, it remains roughly the same, I think. Uh, other things can fluctuate a lot more. What is this? Asphalt, uh, that, that's quite a lot. Price of plastic export, exports uh, or imports quite a lot. The price of used nuclear fuel. Now, nuclear fuel we can choose to export. I'm choosing to just store it for now. And because I'm not exporting it, the price, the price of it looks like it's decreasing slightly, which is kind of cool. Uh, the price of importing nuclear fuel seems to be seems to be holding fairly steady, to be honest. I have sold a couple uh, of bits of nuclear fuel, so you would expect it to change around a little bit. I mean, everything seems pretty stable. The price of wood is... price of wood is rather variable. But that's fine. Look, anyway, it's, it's something that we need to consider, but it's not something that we need to consider sort of strongly. It's uh, it's just sort of something that rumbles on in the background. Either way, uh, the amount of the amount of stuff that we're exporting, the amount of power that we're exporting, should should mean that we're in a pretty darn decent financial situation. I will say, uh, yeah. Look, I mean, this is really really good. We're making a heck of a lot of money from power. Uh, in fact, we're probably making more money from power than we are spending on imports, just in general. Uh, where do we want to cut down on our imports? Well, food is obviously one of them. Clothes. I mean, everything here we are making. Everything here we are making, and so there is no reason as to why we should not be able to reduce our, our our import costs to zero. I mean that's definitely an ambition, but it's a it's a toughie. Uh, we're just about to finish up with the prefab flats over here, which is very very nice. Let's increase the number of people that can work in this building just on a temporary basis, and so that will immediately hopefully be filled with the 200 and. 15, the 215 adults who are still living with their parents. Look at that. Look at the number of university-educated people we have here. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, so that is going to at least increase our workforce somewhat. It's not enough to be happy about, but it is something. I mean, this entire area here will be will be expanded. We need to we need to frankly expand into this area. It's it's got to be done. It. Uh, it simply has to be. We need space, and it can't be near the nuclear reactor. I mean, I've been pretty clear about that on multiple occasions. We cannot expand any closer to the nuclear reactor. Otherwise, everyone's going to get radiation sickness, and that's not something that I really want to see happen. No sorry, not at all. Okay, uh, that's good. That's, that's pretty darn decent. We are loading plastic up. Uh, no, we're not. We're loading steel up. Why the heck are we loading steel up? This is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted even slightly from the distribution office. Can we... Yeah, it's... Uh, I, I've selected only plastic. And yet you're still loading steel up for, uh, for transport. I mean, it's... I guess it's not the end of the world. Anything that we're able to export is, is good, is positive. Um, it'll net me a couple of dollar dues. But it's not, uh, it's not optimal. No, it's its not optimal. Not optimal at all. But hey-ho. Okay, what did, what else did I want to do over the course of this episode, which I haven't done? I did want to build a university in Kolgradsky, didn't I? Okay, let's, uh, let's sort that out or see if we can sort that out to some degree. Haha. <laughs> just me? Okay, just me. Yikes. Tough crowd. Uh, right, give me a education building and give me a... Give me a technical university. I prefer building technical universities as opposed to medical universities. Why? No particular reason. They just are slightly more convenient to uh, slightly more convenient to place. However, they provide exactly the same level of education. Okay, I'm going to need to flatten this area out. This power pylon is proving to be a little bit of an inconvenience, but I can just about deal with it. Okay, and let's just get this truly flat. I mean, I do actually have a soft spot for Kolgradsky. I, I really like the way in which it's developed. It looks it looks really nice. Okay. Yeah, so something like that. That's not too shabby. And let's have a little look at this, see if we can terraform the land just a little bit to get there we go wonderful brilliant I mean even that it kind of adds character I like the way how 
the entire city sort of like fits onto the hill. It, it's just quite, it's just quite nice. It's just quite nice. Right, I can go too steep of an incline. I don't believe it. I thought pads were magic. I thought pads had magic abilities that I just wasn't aware of. It's presumably been changed in the uh, in the most recent update that apparently pads are no longer allowed to uh, break the laws of physics. Well, that's a crying shame. I was really looking forward to breaking some physics. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I'll commit to that sentence. I was really looking forward to breaking some physics. Can we... Ooh. I see a route. I see a route to success. He's done it. He's only gone and done it, folks. Okay, build that pathway. Sure. Uh, we should have the construction offices just zoning up and getting that all sorted. Brilliant. What do we need? We need concrete. We need a little bit of gravel. We've got dumpers. In fact, we've got everything here, I think, that we'll need to... That we'll need to build. Yep, that's fine. We can maybe see if we can supply some of the construction machinery. Yeah, so we might be able to supply some tower cranes from Potato Grad to the construction of this university building here. Uh, now I want to see if, in fact, yeah, uh, a whole bunch of a whole bunch of these buildings should, in theory, be able to access the university. Maybe not all of them but a good number will. Um, also, I suspect that Kolgradsky might end up expanding at some point. I don't know... I don't know when or if it will end up expanding, but I feel like it probably will end up expanding at some point. Are you able to reach the university? No, you're not able to reach the university. Uh, we can rectify that, I think, if I just put in uh, a little bit of a path over here. Too steep for descent. No. Yes. There we go. There we go. Nice. I mean, it's not perfect, but it will allow slightly faster travel to the university. Are we able to fit that in there? No, that's it's not magic. We still need to. We still need to obey the laws of uh, the laws of space time. But that's fine. I mean, look, the university at the moment, I think, is probably in a... Yeah, maybe a little bit of an iffy place. What we can always do, and what we will probably end up doing, is setting up a, a little bit of a bus network within Kolgradsky itself, so that we can transport people up to the university to get educated. And that way, hopefully, we will be able to reach the critical mass of, uh, of, of highly educated people that we have in Potato Grad, so that we can just continue the cycle of, uh, of providing educated people to all of the industries that require them. I don't think that we're ever going to have necessarily a technical industry in the city of Kolgradsky, just because by the very nature of the stuff which happens in Kolgradsky doesn't really require it. Um, we, you know, we've got lots of lots of mines. What's this? What's going on? Power transformer in Refinovsky. Okay, we'll deal with that in just a second. Uh, yeah, we're probably never going to see a super complex technical industry um, in Mineski or Kolgradsky. But, you know, educated people are always needed at schools. We always need them at schools, so uh, there's no reason not to get a university if we have a significant population center. Right, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? It's a power transformer. It's right over here. Uh, we're going to need to connect it up to the grids. And that should allow a fire truck to be called. No fire trucks coming to deal with the fire. Fire truck is called. All right, brilliant. Fantastic. If it turns out that this power transformer ends up going down because of the dirt roads that have to be traveled on, there will be no better reason. There will be no better reason to upgrade them to uh, to gravel. That's for sure. Missing power supply. What? Have I been missing a power supply this whole darn time? Oh, it's because of it. It's because of the power transformer. Okay, that makes perfect sense. So it turns out that uh, this power transformer is providing power to literally everything over here. Actually, it might be an idea if I get a uh, a backup. I don't think these guys are gonna do it. I don't think they're gonna do it. I'm gonna have to build an extra gravel road in here. I don't even think they're gonna take it, but they might. Yes, there we go. Nah, they probably still would have done it. Maybe I was being a little bit melodramatic. Uh, either way, 
once this power is put out, we should resume power. Yes, there's power. Power has been reconnected for everyone there. That's pretty good. That's very, very good, in fact. Okay. I mean, what can I say? I'm happy with I'm happy with the city of Kobe, the only city that I haven't named. It's got a pretty decent name in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of names. Yeah, I can't complain too much. The greenhouse. We've not made any progress on the greenhouse, uh, presumably because we're making progress on some of the yeah some of the structures some of the structures in Kobe itself, which I'm remarkably okay with actually. Yep, that's uh, that's just one of the that's just one of the little quirks of uh, of the game. Also, I did say I did say that I was gonna be building a big old bridge over here, didn't I? Well, I didn't really commit to a big old bridge, but there does need to be a road connection if I want to build, which I do, by the way. I want to build a bunch of um, a bunch of oil rigs on this island here. Right. I mean, presumably this is too far away for terraforming. Yeah. Okay, I mean, let's let's investigate the, the realistic uh, or unrealistic nature of doing this. Building a prefab bridge. I actually think building a prefab bridge might not be the craziest idea in the world. Right. What are the chances? What are the chances of me being able to build a prefab bridge over here? I mean, it's kind of it's kind of cool. I kind of like it, actually. I kind of like it. And where's the oil? The oil is here. Yeah, I actually kind of dig this. Okay, let me zone those. Let me zone those bridges. This is a. Oops. This is a project that I think will. I mean, require a significant amount of resource in order to complete. The reason that I'm doing it out of prefab panels, though, is that uh, prefab panels we have coming out the wazoo. We've got them in absolute abundance. And I mean that without uh, without exaggerating. We do have an absolute abundance of prefab panels. Okay. So let's get that set up. Let's get that set up as well. That's good. Hopefully we, we are able to uh, make some good progress on that. How many prefab panels are we going to require? 914 tons of prefab panels. Now, you may think that that's actually a lot. However, we've already got 300 tons of prefab panels right here. I, uh, I don't actually think it's going to be altogether too difficult to get uh, to get that to get that organized and to get that set up. So that's what I'm going to try and do. We're going to try and build a bunch of connections out to these islands. Now, the reason that I want to do a bridge, first of all, it'll keep costs down, allow us to build uh, allow us to build wells. However, thing is, is that we're going to need we're going to need a bunch of bridge connections up here anyway. If I want to if I want to build the wells. So I might as well take this opportunity to build out a bridge and then have a little look. Yeah, the oil rig, the oil rig situation is is grand over here. I mean, we are going to be able to get good value for money on the uh, on the oil rig front. Yeah, holy cow, are we going to be able to get good value for money here? Yeah, you bet your bottom dollar, we are going to exploit every single little micrometer of space that we have here. I mean, it might even be worth building a bespoke construction office up here in order to try and capitalize on all of the oil. That's how good it is. Look at this. I mean, I, I should hide the map. It's all green. It's all green, baby. It's all completely green. It's the best. It's the best color. It's the best color in the entire world. And you know what? It looks like there is a lot more green out here anyway. So yeah, you know what? I think we're actually going to end up building ourselves a construction office. What am I looking for? Uh, it's here. Here. Yeah, we'll end up building ourselves a construction office. Right in this area so that we can do a little bit of terraforming ourselves. I'm going to get a asphalt road. And also I want to continue to build out to other islands. Oh, building is on fire. It's warehouse number four in Potato Grad. We'll get to it in just a second. If it's in Potato Grad, it's probably going to be fine anyway. Uh, but yeah, there's no oil on this island, but there is oil on this island up here. I say island, I guess it's like a archipelago type. There's also a significant amount of, uh, of oil actually on land up here. Uh, however, this area, this area is the greatest concentration of oil, the, the, the island that I wanted to, to bridge to. I guess we could have bridged across from the mainland. I just figure it's, it's just easier. It's easier and more fun to go direct, isn't it? 
It just is. It's just fun to build flipping bridges. Also, the advantage of building a bridge out to this point is that this uh, this island also has oil out here. So, you know, it's kind of like a double whammy. It will cost us a lot of prefab panels, but prefab panels are so cheap. They're so garbage. Uh, we might as well we might as well just do it. Okay, let me have a little look. Prefab bridge. Can I build to there? It's just easier to bridge over here, I think. Yeah, brilliant. And then connect that up. Yeah, that's that's perfect actually. That's totally perfect. So we're gonna we're gonna build asphalt all the way out here, mostly so that we can you know supply stuff at a fairly decent uh, rate, which I'm pretty happy about. Look, the progress that we're making is good, and the great thing is is that this entire place is really geared up. It's geared up to go. It's geared up to be immediately ready, as you can already see. We're already laying the gravel. We're already making progress here, you know? Everything, everything is good to go. Everything is good to go. And that was the whole point of uh, of Mini Constructo. It's that, you know, bam, one day we decide to start making more uh, more, more oil wells. And immediately, the day after, we're able to immediately start doing that. We're able, we're able to start building uh, as soon as possible. You know, the the, the brain lag, the, the, the time lag between thinking about doing something and actually just doing it, needs to be as short as possible and that was the whole point of uh, of mini constructo as it turns out i think um i think it seems to be working i think it seems to be working and uh, i'm pretty pretty darn pleased with it pretty darn pleased with it if i do say so myself i mean this is coming along brilliantly this is coming along absolutely brilliantly oh there was a fire oh if it's in potato grad it's probably fine it's probably fine he said Right. Well, that's that is a that is a huge embarrassment, frankly. Uh, absolutely ginormous. I mean, it's not even like uh, it's not even like we can save it now. I don't think. I think it's a goner. A fire truck might eventually be called to deal with it, but this fire station is finished. But we don't have any. We don't have any fire trucks over here. Uh, and so we're going to end up losing a warehouse, which may or may not have had a bunch of chemicals and a bunch of plastic and uh, a bunch of really, really important stuff in it. We'll just never know. We will just never know, folks. It's a mystery. Okay. Well, you know what? It shouldn't be too difficult to rebuild that. It might might cost my pride a little bit, uh, a little bit more than I was anticipating, but that's okay. If it's in Potato Grad, it'll probably be fine, he said, with unbelievable arrogance and confidence. Misplaced, as it turned out. Totally, totally, totally misplaced. There we go. Anyway, uh, that will uh, that will be that back to where it was. I mean, look at our finances, by the way. We are fine. We are fine in terms of finances. Presumably because just recently we've sold off a little bit of a, a little bit of a nuclear package, if you know what I mean. I suspect that that is probably probably part and parcel of why we're doing so well. Seemingly have the ability to... Untake that there. Yeah, seemingly have the ability to uh, manufacture enough nuclear components. We are a little bit low on chemicals. Yeah, so this is not good. We're a little bit low on chemicals. What I think I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to start importing chemicals at a great cost. At a great personal cost to me. Which is absolutely not what I want to do. However, it is kind of necessary if we want to ensure that we keep up our nuclear power production. Uh, and if we're not able to keep up our nuclear power production, then we will have problems. Yeah, that's why this area is so darn important, by the way. Kobe is very, very important. It really is. It really, really is for a variety of reasons. Are we all waiting for chemicals? We got, f we got like six trucks here that are waiting for chemicals. Yeah. This is why we need more more population here. We need more population. We need a heck of a lot more chemical production. We really, really do. Yeah, that is that is quite something. There's also a little bit of a scrum going on down here. I don't think I'm that bothered with it, to be honest. I know I did say that I wanted to change up the uh, the oil fuel delivery routes or whatever. Eh, I, I think I can I think I can just about live with it for now. Uh, again, this problem magically disappears as soon as we get more and more population in uh, in Kobe. So, like, that's 
something else that we need to just, you know, continue to work on. Uh, production over here is not going too badly. It's going to take a little while since there's just one primary construction office which is dealing with the vast majority of the construction, but that's fine. I also eventually want to get a highway to run from Mini Constructo all the way down the coast to, uh, to Kobe, but because of the nature of the land, it'll probably be a fairly... a fairly interesting highway to build. Um, also, you can technically make highways in this game by using, uh, like, one-way road. So one-way road, when you set a specific road to one way, as you can actually see right here, there's two lanes. So we've got a left lane and a right lane uh, that cars can both travel down. So that's definitely something that we can, uh, you know, can utilize at some point maybe in the future. Either way, this is looking very, very good indeed. Uh, can I just pop briefly back to Nuclear Grad to see if... We're drawing down on the chemicals. Yeah, you're drawing chemicals. Okay, I mean, that's that's where the vast majority of our money is going to be going right now. Right down the drain to try and move chemicals to the nuclear fuel fabrication plants. I mean, look, what can I say? There's not much I can do about it. We have to, we have to get chemicals. We have to, have to, have to get chemicals. Uh, speaking of chemicals, or speaking not of chemicals, do we want to send the boat to the border? Ah, eh, sure, we can send the boat to the border. Why the heck not? Or maybe you can't even get to the border. Oh, that's interesting. Oh wait, there's a border right here. Just go up to the top. Just... Alright, okay, so it turns out that we... Uh, it can't access the area closest to it. That's fine. We're going to have to send you on a little bit of a... Oh, the reason that you can't access the area... Okay, wow. Because of our because of our low-hanging bridge. I mean, that's somewhat of a problem, to be honest. That is somewhat of a real problem. Uh, I never thought of that, unsurprisingly. Okay. Uh, well, we're not even going to be able to... We're not even going to be able to ship stuff to our to our Western counterparts here. There is a change that I can make, though. There is a change that I can make. So if I delete this bridge here, will that make it possible? I know it's going to break, like, a whole bunch of stuff. But is that going to make it possible for you to get to where you need to go? I mean, I, I figured, like, if I actually terrain modify this area a little bit, we might be able to allow a passageway for the boat. I don't know why this has suddenly become a priority, by the way. I feel like it absolutely isn't a priority. Okay, do a little bit of this. Okay, it's still here. Still here. Uh, okay, I mean, take this out. Take this out. All of this stuff. Yeah, okay. Not looking too bad. Still still here, okay. Yeah, don't worry, I will I will be able to rebuild this instantly. This is just a pretty important connection. Okay, so that's the that's the sort of that's the sort of space that we need to work with here. Uh I think I think if we bridge over this it shouldn't be too much of a problem. With the pipe? I don't think the pipe was the thing that was causing the issue. Certainly looks like the pipe wasn't the thing causing the issue. Uh, now, obviously, everyone has gotten completely confused about the road situation here. So let's go and immediately rectify that. Okay, we're going to need to... We're going to need to, like, increase the height of this bridge, I think. Angle of connection is too sharp. Yeah, what about... What about that? Will that work? The I, thing is, I don't actually think that there's a way to test this unless unless we are like ready to go okay trust bridge cannot end above water which makes it all the more problematic build arch bridge okay here's what we're going to do here's what we're going to do 
I think we give it a running start. So we get the arch bridge out, which I think is probably our best bet. We build it as high as we can above water before we get to the water. And then we give this a shot. Uh, however, it's going to need to... It's going to need to get down somehow. Oh boy, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. I mean, this this is not something that I expected. Crossing not allowed. Actually, I mean, that, that kind of looks good, and I also feel like it'll work. Okay, this is going to be a 120,000 ruble experiment. Will it work? Will it work? Will it won't it? Let's have a little look. I mean, it's going to be... A fairly tight route for the uh, for the ship to navigate anyway. It looks good. It looks fine at the moment. If I tell you to move to the stop, if I get you to recalibrate. Darn it. It doesn't... It doesn't look like it's going to work. That is that is such a crying shame. All right, well, you know what? We're going to have to reconfigure this uh, this route in the next episode. I, I think there is... Oh, God, it's, it's such a shame. That is such a shame. I really thought... I really thought... Maybe it's the pipeline, actually. Maybe it's the pipeline that is, uh, that is the problem. I can clear up a little bit more space under here. See if that's it. But I just don't know... There we go. Get this all terraformed here. Yeah, look, we'll have to we'll have to mess around with this over the course of the next episode. In fact, the entirety of this area just might not be deep enough. That might be the uh, the whole problem. I doubt it is, but hey ho. Also, there's a fire that's just occurred. What is this? It's a prefab flat in uh, in Potato Grad. Okay, this will definitely be fine. Definitely, you have my commitment, citizens comrades it will be fine uh, right well on that note ladies and gents all i can say is fantastically productive episode i mean on absolutely every front i think we've improved our uh, our lot uh, financially yes much better mm, chemical production maybe we haven't improved our chemical production altogether too much however it's the thought that counts right no it's, it's not really action action speaks louder than words i don't know there's a there's a buzzword saying for absolutely every circumstance in in anyone's life uh, either way yeah chemgrad's looking pretty darn good the greenhouse as well is uh you know under construction slowly but surely we're uh, we're making progress oil refinery that ain't looking too bad and uh, and the city of kobe is definitely being worked on at a uh, at a pretty darn good rate not to mention the fact that we are also we are also 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 uh, building a uh, building a brand new crazy bridge. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to be wonderful. Join me for the very next episode of Workers and Resources Soviet Republic, folks. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.